there is something we need It's a leap of faith Oh, if you have the will and the moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there It's a beautiful world out there Today we are starting our walk in the picturesque little coastal village of Lower Largo in Fife. Largo is an ancient fishing village. An excavated late 5th century cemetery points to an early settlement of the site and there are records of the Knights Templar holding lands to the east of the town in the 12th century. However, the village's claim to fame relates to Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. The story depicts a castaway who spends 28 years on a remote tropical desert island near the coast of Venezuela. During his stay on the island, he was visited by cannibals, captives and mutineers before being rescued. Given Defoe spent most of his time in and around London, you might wonder what relationship his book has with this quaint Fife village. While the main character of his novel is based on a real person who lived in Lower Largo by the name of Alexander Selkirk. Alexander Selkirk, born at Lower Largo in 1676, was the seventh son of his parents he ought therefore to have been a lucky lad, according to the superstitions of the time. His fate, however, was to prove quite different. His father, John Selcraig Alexander, was a shoemaker and a tanner. He is supposed to have been a disciplinarian, but Selkirk's mother, Euphen, was indulgent, and Selkirk grew up headstrong. He was not the only one in the family with this disposition. In 1689, his brother John led an armed mob that stopped the minister, who had sworn allegiance to William and Mary after the overthrow of James II, from entering the church. The minister took the course of discretion by distributing the contents of the poor box among the needy and retiring from the parish. Alexander, then aged 13, was at his brother's side. During the next six years, Alexander must have been a worry. On the 25th of August 1695, he was summoned to appear before the congregation for indecent conduct in church. Before the time of his appearance, he had, against his father's wishes, gone to sea. After six years, he returned. Again, he was called to appear in church, this time as a result of a domestic tumult. Before long, he had sailed for England, en route to the South Seas. The expedition that he joined as sailing master appears to have been manned by hotheads, such as himself, who were at loggerheads with the captains. Rashly, he announced that he would rather leave his ship, the Sank Ports, than sail in her, and taking him at his word, the captain disembarked him on the island of Juan Fernandez, with only his clothes, bedding, with a firelock, some powder, bullets and tobacco, a hatchet, a knife, a kettle, a bible, some practical pieces and his mathematical instruments and books. Seeing the sank port sail away, he had a profound change of heart, but by then it was too late. No doubt his friends in Largo would have been surprised by the fist that he had made of his stay on Juan Fernandez. He mastered the art of hunting goats, whose kids he domesticated to provide a source of food. On one occasion he fell over a precipice in pursuit of a goat, which left him unconscious. 
he awoke to find the goat dead beneath him. But he also followed a devout regime Bible study and psalm singing, reading the holy texts aloud to retain the use of his speech. After four years and four months, two Bristol privateers landed for water. There Selkirk was found, a man clothed in goatskins, barely able to understand language or speak, according to the captain who found him. He became mate of one of the ships, returning to Britain in 1711. In 1713, Selkirk was in trouble for assaulting a shipwright in Bristol, but when he returned to Lower Largo, he was a changed man, living as a recluse in a cave specially constructed in his father's garden. Oh, my beloved island, he is credited as crying. I wish I had never left thee. He ran away with a local girl and finally went back to sea. He died off the Guinea coast in 1721. A statue of him was erected in 1885 on the site of his birthplace in Lower Largo.